forces on a current carrying conductor. In this next video, we're going to look at how a magnetic field interacts with a current to produce a force. Um, we, in order to actually predict the outcome of these interactions, it's going to be very helpful to know Fleury's left hand rule. I'll talk more about it after the next scene, but as a little intro, here's what you need to know. You need to make a gun shape with your left hand. You need to point your gun at your target. You need to put your gun on its back and then you need to flick some of the bird. Once you have whole, got, got all of your two fingers and thumb in this arrangement, then basically we're set to uh, predict the direction of the force due to a field and a current. Uh, I'll talk more about this in a second, but f fundamentally the first finger is the field, second finger is the current, and the thumb is the direction of the motion of the force. Let's look at what this really means. Circuit is not touching anything, it's just applying a field. When I switch the current on, it goes, it moves out of the field. So there you go, it gets pushed out. That's the key thing there. Right, so what we've seen so far is when a current, okay, is flowing through a conductor that is at right angles to the magnetic field, we get a deflection, we get a motor force applied to it. So we've seen in this example here, it got deflected to the left of screen. If I now take the crocodile clips and I change them around, so I put the front one on the back and the back one on the front, and we're now going to change the direction of the current what we're going to see is it's going to go the opposite way okay so that's the first thing if we change the direction of the current and i reverse the direction of the current we'll reverse the direction of the of the force applied to it if we now take this and we turn that upside down so that we're changing the direction of the field as well then and I'll just move this down to the right spot. Then what we'll see is the same happens again. We can actually flick this back around again. So now it goes that way again. So as we've just seen in the video, when we had the original scenario, the field was pointing up from the, you know, the magnetic field, we had a south pole at the top and a north pole at the bottom, so we had a field in an upward direction. We had the current coming towards the, the screen, towards the, the camera, and the convention for something coming towards you, this would be the current, is a dot in the circle. And you may remember that when I flicked on the switch, the, uh, the, 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 um, the rod rolled to the left. Okay, now this is explained by Fleming's left hand rule. And as you see here, you have to make a shape like this. Your thumb is the uh, direction of the force of the motion that it experiences. First finger is the field, direction of the field, and the second is the direction of the current. So if you do this, this would be the field going up as we had in that first example. The current's going towards us. We remember that the rod rolled to the left. After that, what I did was I switched around the polarity of the, of the leads. So the current was now going in the opposite direction. And of course we saw the rod roll to the right. Now, what links these, um, what links these, uh, these various components is the equation here, force equals BIL. So the B is the flux density, I of course the current, and L is the length of the conductor that is inside the magnetic field. Okay. Now in most situations, well, I say most, but in many situations, that's all you need to know, just that bit there. Lengthy conductor, current, magnetic field strength. Sometimes, however, we get a situation where the field and the direction of the current aren't always at right angles to each other. So if we think now, let's imagine fields acting in that direction, current flowing in that direction, this would give us a situation where sine of 90 is one, okay? And so this is the optimum condition we get the most force. However, if they aren't at a, at perfectly at right angles and there's some sort of angle, whatever it may be, then we have to put in a sine theta function. And of course, as this gets closer and closer to zero, 
the magnitude of the force between the produced by the interaction of the field and the current diminishes towards zero. Okay, so this is uh, force acting on a conductor in a field. This is the motor rule.